oh, yeah, that's the good stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Let's get started. All right. Today's topic is substance abuse. <laughs> oh, what is that? Oh, God. Substance abuse and addiction in general are diseases that affect anyone. They can really affect anyone. And like many diseases, they have a higher chance of affecting other people, some people more than others. <laughs> in today's case, we're going to be talking about convicts and why they are more likely to overdose after being previously incarcerated. Oh, oh fuck. As well as coming up with ideas on how to help them better themselves with activities that are free to anyone, such as exercise and, and camaraderie. God, I wonder if they have this stuff in prison. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, these are just a, a few stats here to really bring home the idea of how much more likely jail populations are to have substance abuse issues. Oh, this can also help you visualize how a person who got out of jail might fall back into their old habits or get into new habits that they were that they just got into when they were incarcerated all right uh, as you can see in this graph you know 68% of people uh, have you know done drugs in jail or have some sort of substance abuse disorder oh god <laughs> uh, uh, god substance abuse can come from many things it can be influenced in many ways uh, you could be peer pressured into doing drugs, or, or maybe you want to look cool, so you uh, do drugs. In the same vein, your friends could be doing drugs, and because you see people that you trust doing drugs, you think that it's okay that you can do them too. Oh, oh, oh and that they're not bad for you. But drugs, much like video games or any other hobbies, can be a means of escapism or a way to cope with a past abuse or trauma. Ah. Uh, God, <laughs> God, uh, stress, stress can be a huge part as to why someone might turn to substance abuse it is a coping mechanism. It makes them feel safe or whole, and it creates a feeling of addiction that they can't escape. Any amount of stress could lead to the path of substance abuse, but typically higher levels of stress lead to higher chances of doing drugs. An example of someone who's under a high amount of stress and does drugs could be maybe a college student. You think that they have a lot of workload or something, so they might turn to Adderall or, or any other stimulants to keep them awake or to keep them going in order to catch up with work demands. It's, it's wild what people will do to try and end the stress that they're feeling. <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> this is a kick. Oh, another reason a person might turn to drugs is that they, they don't have a good social net to catch them when they start to fall to them. Uh, this is especially true to people who are, are incarcerated and they are, they are not afforded any amount of social support aside for the other convicts who may condone or encourage them to take drugs. And it's also the fact that even when they are released, their social nets are weakened to such a degree that they have a greater chance of falling back into the bad habits that they started before they even got incarcerated in the first place. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, our group chose exercise science not only because it's the only one we had that dealt with the body in the first place, but it's because we all had knowledge that since most of the time, exercise is used to overcome addictions already. You know, exercise is is a great way to promote, uh, you know, better, better habits. Uh, in our research, we found that not only that we were right, but that there's already a type of therapy for what we were doing. It, it, it was it was wild. It's not exactly the same thing. All right. Uh, our proposed solution is recreational therapy. OK, OK. Uh, it's not like the old folks one where they, they are move slowly to get back control of their joints or when someone gets injured where they have to like move slowly to be able to walk again. Thank Hank Schrader from, from Breaking Bad. But, but I digress. Uh, it's not that thing is what we're saying. Uh, it, it's um, a way for ex-convicts to get some physical activity as well as meet new friends. And that is one big thing. Meeting new friends is a huge part of that. Getting a better social backing that don't want them to fall back into drugs is the one of the biggest things that you could do to help yourself. All right? Uh, stay away from drugs. Oh, oh, oh. oh it's kicking. 
Oh, that, it's a great way to say from drugs, and uh, it, it causes a more positive outlet. What we actually mean by recreational therapy, because I just realized I didn't even say that, uh, recreational therapy is when we are, are basically asking them to play recreational sports, to let out all that, that aggression, to let out all that, that stress into a more physical outlet, into a more competitive outlet where they can really just like thrive and make new friends and really just have what they need to to really to reintegrate with society. It, it, it's a perfect solution. Gosh. Uh, uh, we feel as if the solution is better than having someone lecture you on how drugs are bad and you shouldn't do drugs. You know, that's going to ruin your life. They already know that it's going to ruin their – it's already ruined their life. They don't need to hear that again. Now, obviously, if they need to hear that, they can go get therapy for that. But I'm just saying that we don't need to keep telling them, to keep informing them, oh, hey, did you know that you did drugs so you need to be chastised for it forever? No, no, no. What our thing is doing is to help provide a social backbone for long-term recovery efforts for them so that they can acknowledge – so we can acknowledge that, you know – some people have stressful situations that they they go through and they had to use drug abuse to to help them cope with that stressful situation but you know there we can we're trying to show them that there are other alternatives to the stress that it's not you don't have to just go with drugs you don't have to do that you can go through any other outlet any physical outlet physicality promotes mentality think about that you know and for for the alternative we're almost like coaching them out of their mental illness we're we're in in this slide it says that like you know it's mostly seen as a mental illness but we're really trying to help them not be in that that mindset of that they need to do drugs in order to either be happy or to cope with the stress that they're feeling in their everyday life oh yeah god uh, some of our strengths our hopes are to to uh, keep convicts off of drugs and to, but more so than that, to keep them out of prison again. We do not want them going back there to lose all the progress that they had just made on their fucking and their on their entire journey here. On their entire journey. All right. Oh God. Oh, recreational sports has been shown to reduce stress, which in turn, <coughs> in turn, uh, can reduce violent outbursts and other impulsive behaviors born of stressful stimuli. We acknowledge the fact that these solutions, there are risk involved with them. Most inmates already don't have the greatest impulse control. So, you know, they, they, they might, you know, just try and beat up another inmate for beating them in a sport. But, you know, that's we have to we have to take those risks with them we have to let, show them to not be like that so like you know to better inform them so you know so we have to take them out and put them into that environment so they can learn how to not be as violent and to take it out on the court you know uh, we also think that there's a huge stigma tied to convicts which like stop them from getting into recreational leagues in the first place right so because they can't get into a recreational league you know it might stop them from wanting to even try in the first place because they can't get in the normal league but there are leagues made specifically for convicts that like already so that they can have an outlet other than drugs or other illicit activities that are awful dude oh my god and you know other like the strengths of our things are great too you know it motivates them it helps them stay out of incarceration again and it helps them reduce that stress and anxiety level that they might have due to having to use drugs all the time to cope with it you know because once you stop taking drugs all you can think of is that that feeling that that feeling that you you the stress and anxiety that you're feeling because you're not taking them anymore you've kind of mixed the two into one thing oh god oh uh, Ex-convicts have a lot of issues coming out of jails, one of which is substance abuse. But what our hopes is that recreational therapy will not only help them get over their addictions, but also help reintroduce them into society with a context where people actually want to be around them. The issue with convicts is once they're out, they feel isolated again, and that isolation breeds more stress. That stress will eat them alive until they switch back to their substance abuse using ways and that is not good we do not want that so our solution is to try and make it so they're part of a team and where a team wants them to be there they're 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 completely like oh my god yeah um and we're also trying to help them uh reduce the 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 mental issues that they have and because uh god we're trying to help them reduce the mental issues that they have 
by physical stimuli because physical stimuli helps reduce anxiety and depression oh, as well as other mental health issues oh gosh this this has been our our presentation on substance abuse and why it's wrong and how we can help ex-convicts in the future some of our references include all of these people i i i'm not sure i'm ooh. Uh, thank you for listening. You know, just think about how we could help ex-convicts in the future and how, you know, we, we can be a better service to them to make sure that they can feel less isolated from society and how we can help them with their issues. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 